deciding the governor has granted us the authority to extend our stay-at-home, work-at-home order for another two weeks till September 24th, with some exceptions. And those pertain to activities in our parks, our beaches, and hiking trails. Those will be open for limited solo activity. That means individuals can go into the park to sit down, to read, to meditate, to eat lunch, sit on a beach and get a suntan, go on a hike, and do everything else. Run, jog, walk. Community gardens will be open for individual gardening in your plot. All of those things will be allowed in order to allow people to access these activities or do these activities, the parking lots will be opened for the sole purpose of solo activity along the lines that I described. We do believe outdoors is safer than indoors. We said that repeatedly. But the reason why we shut down our parks, beaches, and trails was because we lost control and allowed large gatherings to take place, up to 100, 150 people, maybe more in certain parks. Very hard to enforce those kind of gatherings, and so we had to do a closure of parks, beaches, and trails to gain control. And the Honolulu Police Department has done an excellent job, along with the rest of us on this island, participating and cooperating. As a result, the next step is to slowly reopen, and that first step is parks, beaches, and trails for solo activity. On sep prior to September 24th, we will be making an announcement. We started the discussions with the governor on how to reopen in a very careful, cautious way not to rush like we did the first time where we had 10 reopenings and then a surge in cases which led to the second shutdown. We don't want to repeat that a third time. And so we're going to be very careful, put a lot more science, a lot more um, thought into what happens. And we'll be announcing that as soon as possible. With that, I'll open up to any other questions you may have. Um, what, what's going to lead you to, uh, what do you want to see? You know, in terms of the cases to further reopening, to, to expand. I think we want to, well, one, we want to see the number of cases come down over a, a average period of seven days to two weeks. Today's number was a good number. Now we know that over weekends, and this was a long weekend, the number of cases, uh, actually tests completed, is much less. So um, I don't think we can base a decision on that one day's number. In fact, um, our medical panel advises us to look at an average minimum of, of one week, but more likely two weeks is the best way to go. And look at an average number of cases over that period of time. We've talked to a lot of businesses over the last few days, Mayor, uh, who say that they've taken the steps to prevent the spread, but they feel, feel that, you know, they, sh they should, uh, you know, be able to reopen their businesses a little bit more than, than, than now. How do you respond to that? You know, I've also talked to a lot of businesses over this period of time, in fact, over the past couple of weeks, and listened to their stories of hardship, and, and it's heartbreaking and heart, heart rendering, uh, wrenching. As you know, we have now expended almost $60 million to assist small business in reopening, and we're going to continue to look for ways to help our small businesses. But one thing we all know, and you can even ask the small businesses, when you don't have a healthy community, you don't have a healthy economy. And I saw it with my own two eyes as I went to places like Zippy's. As the number of cases went up, we saw the number of people sitting in indoor dining drop because people didn't feel safe. And it's incumbent that we have people feel safe. And by having them feel safe, you've got to show the numbers are down to a controllable number. And then people will go out and start to use these businesses again. And so there is this balance, but I know it's extremely hard. And don't, for a minute, not feel a great heartache for the troubles that people are going through. Uh, oh, sorry. You have the Small Business Relief Fund uh, and plans to add to that as well. I know there's another proposal out there to maybe give relief to landlords on their property taxes. Can you maybe share your thoughts on a different type of model for um, landlords? Yeah. So I prefer the model that we're doing versus the one you describe. And the one you're describing actually is we give to the, the money to the landlords who in turn pay their real property taxes and forgive lease rent to those tenants of theirs. 
I'd much rather just give it directly to the tenant, which this money can go to lease rent, for example, and it's a more direct assistance than that indirect pay it to landlords who in turn pay it to their tenants. And some of these landlords are groups like Alamona Shopping Centre, and their tenants can be high-end net worth, high-end type of retail. I'd much rather give it directly to those who need it the most. Mm -hmm. There are some local landowners, though, I guess. So I guess when we refer to those, and the, the model would really take into account local business tenants. Well, it, it, right now, the, the program goes to local businesses that have a storefront. So the kind of things you're talking about, landlord, there's a storefront. And that money, again, about $60 million has now been given out to them directly. And we're looking to improve on that program. We'll be making announcements uh, later this week on what else we're going to do to help a small business. But bottom line for me is get it directly to the small business, not to the landlord who in turn gives it the small business. I think a more direct approach is the approach I prefer. Although the other one is an interesting one that I don't dismiss, but looking at all things being equal, I think our program is a more direct approach. Uh, Mayor Christina Jedra, Civil Beat. Why not allow people who live in the same household to visit parks, beaches, and trails together? Well, I knew that question would, would come. So we're starting off very carefully uh, where we know we can enforce. But when you talk about the same household and you're a police officer, how do you know who's in the same household when you go to enforce? And what we're trying to do is create very simple, bright line enforcement measures. So we don't return to what happened this past summer where we saw large gatherings uncontrolled this is the first step to get back to a reopening where we can control those gatherings and have clear enforcement guidelines. Another one from Christina. What are the latest takeaways from the federal surge testing effort? Well, one, I think that one of the takeaways for me is that this is surveillance testing, right? So they test everyone whether you have symptoms or not, whether you came into close contact or not. And what we're finding is that through surveillance testing, um, while we know that the virus is widespread, it's not everywhere in our community because the positivity rate is relatively low compared to what we call as diagnostic testing, which is testing for those who have symptoms or came into close contact. That positivity rate is much higher. So as a leader for the island of Oahu, it tells me that, you know, it's not everywhere. That's good news. At the same time, it tells us we need to be more strategic in how we test going forward. The other thing is, it, I think it helps our community um, know the importance of getting tested. It helps our community now plan for the flu season that's coming up to get your flu shot because we know that if you have the flu and you have COVID-19, it's even a worse case scenario. So it, it's getting people thinking along the right lines. And I even think further down the road to a vaccine. When one comes, where now we do surge testing and our community has shown a real resilience and adapt, uh, adoption of surge testing, they can do surge vaccinations because we need to vaccinate 60 to 70 percent of the population of Oahu to open up freely and not have to worry about the virus anymore. That's a that's a huge goal, but I think we can get there because he's seen what we've done with surge testing. Uh, Casey Harlow, Hawaii Public Radio, wants to know if you can explain the factors that led to this two-week extension. Number one is the number of cases still. It hasn't come down as much as we would like, um, and that that is concerning. Of course, contact tracing and quarantine and isolation. As you know, the city has committed um, to uh, fund up to 250 contact tracers minimum and up to 500. We're in the final stages of ironing out the legal agreements with Department of Health because we will not be doing the tracing. We're gonna use our CARES money to hire the Army that they're gonna manage. And then quarantine hotels, We, as, as you know, we've got one hotel we're down to closing on a second hotel in a phased way so we won't have to pay for all the rooms at one time as they're needed we will uh, take on a, a bunch of the rooms on and again we're providing that with our cares money department of health but they're going to manage and operate these quarantine hotels uh, max rodriguez khon2 are families able to go to a beach or a park for instance uh, parents with young children it's just one person at a time in the park so it's going to be difficult to have a young child to take that child in the park with, with the parent. A follow-up from Max. With new leadership in the State Department of Health, are you working together to set triggers to reopen parts of the economy? Absolutely. Uh, through the weekend, we spent a lot of time with uh, our state government um, 
stakeholders and our city government stakeholders to talk about how we reopen a second time in a more uh, metrics driven, transparent way. And I would say that both the city and the state are working closely together on these metrics and this transparency like never before. It doesn't hurt that Dr. Libby Char, who's with the city, is involved in those meetings and will be going over to the state shortly. And, uh, but we see all hands on deck with the state working together. Esme Infante at Kumu wants to know how this solo activity is going to be enforced. Like, how is enforcement going to be different um, since it got a little out of control last time, as you said? One, we have a Honolulu Police Department that's fully on board and, as you know, has been enforcing um, in a very strong way through the, since the state, stay at home, work at home order went into place. Um, and they're going to continue to do it in the same way. If you're running through a park by yourself, you'll be okay. If you're sitting on a beach by yourself, you'll be okay. But if you're sitting on the beach with five of your best friends, you won't be okay. And you'll be warned. And if not, if you don't take action, you'll be cited and arrested if you do not take action after that. Same way as when parks are closed altogether. The reason why we did just one, it's easy to tell. If someone's just walking, running, sitting by themselves, is harder when you have a group of people together. Uh, Kristen Concilio at the paper wants to know if you think tourism will be able to reopen by October 1 at this point. You know, I, I do actually think right now people come into Oahu every day, visitors do, and they have to quarantine. Sometimes a thousand at a time, two thousand at a time. It's very hard to enforce against quarantine breakers when you don't know who they are, where they are. And so I'm, I'm for testing right, right now. Um, it's better to have people tested and negative going about their, their, their travels in Hawaii than to say they're in quarantine and they're breaking their quarantine. So I'm in favor of testing. In fact, maybe testing on Oahu. You could come in, be tested. If you're negative, you get to go. If you're not tested, you, you can't leave a certain area. So we've heard from residents that write in or call us that say that they are frustrated with maybe police responding to their calls, reporting to the COVID hotline that they set up, that they're not doing enough. The business that they report on or the residents, for example, just goes back the next day and does the same thing because they aren't cited or arrested or whatever. What's your message to those people that are just so frustrated with how enforcement's going? Well, I, I guess my message would be put yourself into the Honolulu Police Department's shoes. You know, there's about 2,100 officers on the island of Oahu for about a million people. And they are getting a lot of calls to their hotline and they go out and investigate. But as you know, even if they enforce against breakers of our requirements, they can go back and do it again and again and again. And so the police constantly have to reinforce which they're doing. And I, you know, they've done an incredible job. And for the most part, you've seen that our beaches, parks and trails are pretty empty. It's a sad thing to say, by the way, it breaks my heart as I look at the style advertiser day and see the picture out of Miley and there's not a soul on the sand. The good news is people are complying. The sad news is people aren't in the beaches where they should be. And so I believe the police officers are doing the best job possible. And we don't want those who are calling the hotline to give up. To understand their information is needed information to go and enforce. But also know it's just like when uh, you go in and you tell someone to stop doing something, they stop while you're there, they leave the park and when you leave, they go back in again and it, you have to go back and reinforce. And we're gonna be doing that, but it's not perfect. Uh, Jurgen Steinmetz, E-Turbo News. Today, U.S. Travel said they don't support any state enforcing a quarantine. What would you tell U.S. Travel? Well, I guess if you're in the travel business, you'd much rather have no quarantine so you can have people traveling. Um, but I also believe that traveling spreads the virus. When people travel, the virus travels too. And so it's simple for them to say, but on the island of Oahu, we had you know, up to 300 cases a day and many people have died. And so we have to look at it from that perspective too. Uh, Daryl Huff, Hawaii News Now. Uh, you say the case numbers are keeping people from visiting businesses. Shouldn't it be up to the businesses whether there is enough business to open their doors? Um, I, I, I believe that it's the job of government to protect the health of our community. And I do believe a healthy community leads to a healthy economy. It's simple as that. Max Rodriguez, KHON. 
Uh, if reopening metrics are yet to be decided, that implies that that 924 will not necessarily be reopening day for businesses. How soon will they get certainty on what their reopening dates will allow to be? Like I said, uh, we're working to try to get some announcement out by the end of the week, early next week is our goal. Those discussions have started. And I also like to emphasize when you say businesses reopening, businesses are open. Our hotels are all open. Our banks are open. Our law firms are open. Insurance is open. Gas stations are open. A lot of things are open. So this thing that we're shut down, no business is open, is not correct. But there are businesses that are closed. And we want to get those open as soon as possible in the safest manner. But the one thing we're not going to do a second time is rush to reopen and then have another spike and have that occur during the holiday season and say, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, we're in another lockdown. So we're going to be much more cautious, much more conservative, and much more careful in terms of protecting the health of our community. Another one from Christina Jedra. Can couples go hiking but stay six feet apart? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good question, but one I wish I didn't have to answer. You, individual solo activity. You should be hiking by yourself. But obviously, there'll be other people on the trail ahead of you and behind you. you Got to use your best judgment. This is not about playing games with the virus. Uh, another one from Christina. When people are found guilty of a violation, does their fine money go to the court system or city coffers? Goes to the court system. It does not go to the city and county of Honolulu. Oh, yeah. Just sorry, just to clarify, because I'm getting some confusion. Yes. Um, how many can gather at this point? Is it the same? Just reiterate again in one household. So as I mentioned, it's, you know, at the stay at home, work at home, and we also have a gathering um, order in place. So you can only get one household in one household. Some other, your friends from another household are prohibited or should not be coming to your house to gather. We're trying to keep, really bring down the spread of the virus. And we do know that it spreads when people from different households get together. It depends on how many, if you have a family of 10, mm -hmm. that's your family, that's your household. You can be together in your 10. You don't have to kick out your tutu. Um, or your young, youngest child, they can all be together, but you can't invite your auntie and cuz from another household over to your house to have dinner. Um, that, is, that is a gathering that is prohibited.